Holy sh Holy sh Holy sh Let's go! <laughs> What is up, Maxter Diablo 4 video, and today we're going over my Boulder Cane build. Now, this has to do with the new unique, the Dolmen Stone, uh, which allows us to cast boulders when Hurricane is up, and when we do that, the boulders rotate around us. This allows us to summon a ton of boulders. Um, however, boulders' big issue is it has a cooldown, and then if we make it a core skill, every time we cast it, it costs 50 spirit. This poses quite a difficult challenge in making it a reliable build, um, and I think I've come up with a really interesting and cool solution to that. And when you put all of these elements together, uh, Boulder being relatively strong skill, just costing a lot of spirit to use, and then you can get tons of them rotating around you. Uh, not only is it quite nice for mobbing, but it's really, really good for bossing. Um, and today I want to break down everything you need to know about this build uh, to use what I've, like, personally, the strongest uh, bossing build that I've used on Druid this season. So I hope you guys enjoy the guide. Let's get right into it. So we're going to start with an overview, and then we'll get into my gear specifics, spirit bones, vampire powers, paragon board, and so on and so forth. And you can find uh, little timestamps at the bottom, so you can go to the part of the video that you want to watch. Now, I mentioned in the intro that boulder costs a lot of spirit, and the other issue with the build is that if hurricane is not up, if you do not have hurricane available, boulder goes back to being the cruddy skill uh, that it is without this power. Um, by the way, the Dolmen Stone currently drops from Durial. Um, so if you're looking to kill Durial, I have like a Stormclaw guide that you can find in the description. Very good at killing bosses, not quite as good as this build. Um, and then once you kill Durial, you have a chance to get the Dolmen Stone um, and that allows this build to happen. I would not recommend attempting this build without this unique. So with the Dolmen Stone, we need to have Hurricane up and we need to have Spirit at all times. And the two, the few things that we're going to be using uh, to guarantee that to start off is Nature's Fury. Now, there is an interesting synergy that you can use with Earth and Might. And when we get the Earth and Might Lucky Crits, uh, that's going to give us unlimited resource. And then we could spam our boulders. And that's nice on paper. However, Spamming boulders doesn't really help when Hurricane isn't active. And so what I'm using is Nature's Fury. This allows us, whenever we're casting our boulders, to give us cooldowns of our different things. And then we can have 100% uptime of our Hurricane. Now, 100% uptime of Hurricane is so unbelievably important because it allows you to maintain your boulders all the time. So if you're casting a bunch of boulders and then the Hurricane drops all of the boulders just fall away, and then you need to use all your spirit and all your, like, abilities to get the boulders going around, and it slows down the clear. If you get Hurricane's cooldown back while it's active, you can summon Hurricane again, and then the boulders will stay up. This allows you to keep the uptime of your boulders and just feeding it more and more boulders so that you can stay at your highest damage state. In order to deal, like, real damage with this build, you need to have so many boulders around you that you can't see anything else. Um, and so Nature's Fury is the best way to achieve that. Now, to pair with Nature's Fury, we're using the Symbiotic Aspect. This reads, whenever Nature's Fury key passive triggers a free skill, your non-ultimate cooldowns of the opposite type are reduced by, on my boots, I've got five seconds. So this means as I'm casting boulders, for example, um, whenever I trig trigger with boulder, I get cooldown for Hurricane because that's a storm skill. And one of the best ways to generate spirit right now is Trample. Whenever we trample, we're going to get 40 spirit with the Savage Trample. The issue here is that Trample is a werebear skill. It is not a lightning skill or a storm skill, and it's not an earth skill. So all of this cooldown that we're feeding ourselves doesn't work for Trample at all. However, if we add the aspect, the Trampled Earth, uh, now Trampled is also a nature magic and an earth skill. So all of our basic attacks that we're casting um, and our, our hurricanes that we're casting now give us trample cooldown. And then we can have 100% uptime of trample, which keeps us moving with the build. And the boulders will stay around you while you're trampling around. So you can 
have like decent movement and it's going to constantly feed us more spirit um and then all of those procs um with this trample actually casts landslide casts a bunch of landslides all of those landslides can feed more uh symbiotic procs and that allows us to basically have 100 percent uptime of our skills the last big thing that we need for this build to succeed is attack speed it takes a bit of time to generate all of the boulders around you and while you're doing that you have to stand still it's quite awkward so the faster we can like power up our character, um, the better off we're going to be. And that's why we're also going to be really focusing on attack speed. You're going to want attack speed on your gloves. You're going to want attack speed in your spirit boats. Um, but the most important place uh, that we're going to be getting attack speed is the ravenous aspect. This gives us a lucky hit chance to give us increased attack speed based on our movement. Uh, we've got like just standing here, like a decent movement speed, but the more movement speed that you can roll on your boots, on your amulet, uh, or so on and so forth, the more attack speed we can get. And that's gonna make the build feel a lot better. Now that we've gone over the general overview of the build, let's get into the gear specifics. So to start us off, I am gonna be using Vasily's Prayer. There are other options to use here. However, Vasily's Prayer gives us the Werebear uh, tag for our Earth skills, mainly Boulder. This allows us to add multiple ways to scale it. For example, we can add the Insatiable Fury. This gives us plus three ranks to our Werebear skills. On top of that, we can get Paragon nodes, such as the... Uh, survival instincts while in wear bear form, we deal 1% increased damage up to 50% uh, for every 1% in current life. Uh, this gives us a ton of extra damage, and when we're casting our boulders, we're going to be in that wear bear form. Um, and so we can just stay in there and get that damage increase. Um, so these two synergize really well together. If you wanted a little bit more survivability, you could take off the Insatiable Fury, uh, but those plus three ranks are really, really nice. Next, we get into our gloves. The number one thing that you can find here is attack speed and second crit chance. Um, I've got crit damage with earth skills, which is really nice. And then if you can roll lucky hit, that's good too. Uh, but attack speed, crit chance, and crit damage with earth skills are going to be the best things that you can use. I originally tried this build with overpower, and while overpower was quite nice for mobbing, it doesn't work as well for bossing, and that's why we've gone for a full crit spec with this build. Uh, currently, without my glyphs really leveled at all, uh, I've got a 388% crit damage base, um, and then we've got more, 15% more uh, with crowd controlled, more with vulnerable, and another 245% uh, with our earth skills, so we're stacking up a ton of crit damage. Um, and then on my gloves, I've got the trample is a nature, magic, and earth skill. Uh, this is quite nice to have. Then on your pants, just looking for a lot of survivability here, and then ranks of boulder. My pants are all right. I've got damage reduction, armor, wall and werebear form, healing received. Uh, but the big thing here is the ranks of boulder, and then we're rocking the disobedience there. Next up on your boots, you want as much move speed as possible. Move speed and spirit cost. I've got move speed, move speed after killing an elite, cold resistance, and spirit cost reduction. And then we've got the symbiotic aspect on our boots so that we can constantly be triggering all of our skills. And then lastly, for our weapon. Now, there's a few different options for weapons. I think the absolute best in slot weapon that you can use is a staff. Uh, the reason for using a staff is because you can get the implicit damage to crowd controlled enemies. This season, they've moved a lot of our damage multipliers away from our weapons and into our Paragon board. As you can see here, I've got damage to crowd controlled on the top implicit and rolled as well, as well as damage to close, crit damage with earth skills and crit damage. This is what I would consider to be a god tier, like perfect weapon. Um, and the reason that damage to crowd controlled is so good is because of the reworked earth and devastation node. Earth and devastation raids our earth skills deal 10% increased crit damage, increased by 20% of our damage versus crowd controlled bonus up to 40%. This is giving us another 50% uh, increased crit damage with our earth skills and any other thing on your weapon would just be additive. Damage to crowd controlled is the only thing that's multiplicative. And on top of that, Boulder's really good at CCing uh, bosses. Uh, if you're fighting tanky bosses, they will get brought into the CC'd state just because Boulder's a massive pushback. And when they're getting hit by a ton of them, uh, they will, like their stagger bar just goes boom. Uh, that's really nice. For the amulet, obviously we got the Dolmen Stone. This is a must have. Do not attempt this build without this. Um, trust me, Boulder's pretty meh. It's only when you can get it constantly flying around you that it becomes good uh then for your rings what you're really looking here uh is crit chance crit damage and damage to crowd controlled the last thing can be anything um physical damage lucky hit um but the real big things that you're looking for are crit chance crit damage damage to crowd controlled um once again because the crowd control will give us a multiplier on this ring i've got crit chance crit damage earth skill damage 
uh, and max life. And then uh, we're going to be using the retaliation aspect. Our core skills deal increased damage based on amount of fortify. We're fortifying like instantly because all of our boulders are critting. Um, and then we've got the band. I'm um, using natural balance. Casting a storm skill grants you an earth skill. Um, and casting an earth skill gives us increased crit chance of our storm skills. We really just care about the increased crit damage for our earth skills. Once again, we are scaling crit damage to the max. If I'm doing a dungeon, I'll swap out the natural balance aspect for something like an umbral aspect, uh, just so that the boulders can self-sustain. Uh, the build and setup that I'm showing you is specifically for bossing, um, and so you can make it a little bit more comfy for running like normal content using an umbral ring where you can generate more resource and cast more boulders. For the rest of the vampiric powers, I already said we're using ravenous. I'm also using un undying. We're doing a lot of casting, so undying is going to give us a lot of healing. Um, and because we have to stand still to cast our boulders, this gives us a safer way to like power up our character, uh, which I really like. We're using Sanguine Brace. This is going to give us Fortify whenever we kill an enemy and more crit chance whenever we have that Fortify. Hectic, uh, we are going to be weaving in basic attacks. Those basic attacks are going to give us cooldowns. More cooldowns, the better. Uh, this is a bit redundant uh, as the only power that I would sub out here. Um, so if you wanted to use something like uh, the Infection where you're constantly poisoning enemies, uh, that could be really good in this slot. But the more cooldowns, the better. Um, and then lastly, I've got Anticipation for more ultimate skill cooldown. Um, Petrified not only is going to give us that massive crit damage multiplier, but it also has the um, modifier on it that whenever we kill an enemy, we get 25 spirit back. You pop this into a big crowd, and then all of a sudden, you have infinite boulder cast because they're going to be killing enemies and then giving you that spirit back. Um, and so that's why I'm using that. For our skill tree, we are going to be using a basic attack. Basic attacks give us... Uh, spirit back, so that's really important. Um, and the best basic attack that I've found is Wind Shear, uh, mainly because when we hit an enemy with Wind Shear, we actually can get increased movement speed. And remember that increased movement speed is increased attack speed uh, for us, so that's really great. Um, I tried the other like basic skills, and because of the nature of Boulder pushing enemies away, you just can't really connect with basic attacks, uh, which was quite frustrating. So you need something with range, um, and Wind Shear not only is going to uh, be great for this build, giving us more attack speed, but it'll also constantly give us resonance so that we can cast our storm skills and then boom, we cast our, um, our boulder and I'll show you my like boss rotation, but we're going to be rotating between our basic attacks and our boulders so that our boulders are getting all of the resonance casts, uh, which is really, really strong. Um, we are not going to be using a core skill. Um, we are going to be grabbing, uh, wild impulses though, because we are making boulder a core skill. Uh, as you can see, it's got the like core tag here. Uh, so we're grabbing wild impulses for more damage there, grabbing predatory instinct, more crit chance, and iron fur for more damage reduction. Then we go down into blood howl. Um, when you're first starting this build, uh, go for the blood howl. It gives you spirit. Once you get your spirit under control, uh, getting the 15% attack speed is another game changer. Um, you're going to make sure that you're casting this right as you go into your bossing. Nature's Reach, more damage to distant enemies for our boulders. Um, boulders kind of right on, teetering on the edge between like close and distant. Um, and so I grab that just to make sure that we're maximizing our damage. Endless Tempest is super important. More hurricane uh, duration. Um, for like normal Nightmare Dungeons, I use Savage Hurricane. This makes enemies deal less damage. Um, however, for bossing, Natural Hurricane gives us vulnerable. We don't have another way to make enemies vulnerable in this build because I'm not using the Exploit Glyph, uh, mainly because Exploit Glyph is for three seconds. And if we don't kill a boss in three seconds, then we don't really have that. Um, so Natural Hurricane just gives me that uh, boss vulnerable, which I find really, really nice. Um, Boulder. There's two options here because of how many times boulders are hitting enemies. I think Savage Boulder is a better choice. Um, stacking up that crit chance very, very quickly rather than Natural Boulder, which gives us that flat 20%. Um, both are pretty good, but I think this is better. Um, then we've got Crushing Earth, more damage with our Earth skills, more damage while fortified, and crits fortify us. As you can see, we're popping up like a crazy amount of numbers, so this fortify just zooms us up. Uh, we need Trample, Spirit, can't take advantage of Envenom on this build. Um, I was trying to like play around with the like vampire power does poison damage, but it doesn't do a dot. And so those enemies aren't poisoned. So I don't think Envenom works with that. Um, Petrify for the mana and also the crit damage. We're going Resonance, Defiance, Natural Disaster, one point into Circle of Life for the healing, and then nothing else here. And then lastly, our Nature's Fury. Real quick, our boss rotation. Uh, you're going to want to pop. I don't have a boss in front of me, so these guys might not help too much. Uh, but you're going to pop Hurricane. 
first, then you go into your um, Blood Howl for your attack speed. Then you're going to basically hold down your basic attack while bouldering. Um, so that's going to like kind of interweave your basic attacks with your boulders so that you're like basic attacking and bouldering. This is what I found the best way to generate all of these. And then as soon as you've done that and your spirit gets low, um, that's when you want to trample basically through an enemy. Um, that's going to give you your spirit back. Um, and then you should be basically full on your boulders. Then I like to pop my petrify and then all of my boulders are going to be doing their work. Um, and then they can get all of that crit damage. For our spirit boons, wariness, less damage from elites, swooping attacks for more attack speed, energize, lucky hits give a spirit back. Now, boulders, lucky hit is only 4% chance. Uh, however, hurricane has a decent basic uh, lucky hit. Our basic attacks have decent lucky hit. Um, and the like frequency of boulders uh, does make this pretty nice. However, just know that boulder lucky hit, uh, with my lucky hit chance, I'm going from like a 4% to a 5%. Uh, so that's not great, but we just need all of that spirit back as much as possible. Calamity extends our damage multiplier with Petrify. And then lastly, calm before the storm. When we are lucky hitting, uh, we are doing more damage. Uh, if you wanted to, uh, for like Nightmare Dungeons, you could go Obsidian Slam and then you're getting kills and then you're going to get uh, overpowers on your boulders. However, uh, once again, this is not a like nightmare dungeon focus build there are much better nightmare dungeon builds than this in my opinion this is really great for killing varshan greg duriel uh any boss that you want to kill it's great at not quite as good uh, for nightmare dungeons and the main reason for that is because of suppressor elites uh suppressor elites just really ruin this build um the main reason for that is because if a boulder touches a suppressor elite bubble it goes away and if you cast them inside the Suppressor Elite bubble and they take a step forward or backwards, then the bubble touches the edge of the boulder and then all of the boulders go away. Um, and it's just a bit of a pain to fight Suppressor Elites. Uh, I found myself dying to them because I couldn't do damage to them because I couldn't maintain my boulders and casting all the boulders is a very like resource intensive thing. Um, so like using all of your spirit to cast a bunch of boulders, all for them to just disappear uh, was pretty frustrating. And so that's why it's not my favorite Nightmare Dungeon build. It can absolutely blast your Nightmare Dungeons, uh, but there are better options in my opinion. For our Paragon board, I'm still working on mine. Um, I need to min-max a little bit more because I think I can fit one more Glyph. Uh, my Glyphs are not leveled right now, so they're not like a huge priority mean, uh, to me, but I, I think I could fit all of the things that we want plus one more Glyph for another damage multiplier. Um, but the Glyphs that I'm using on this build are Spirit. Once again, we're scaling our crit damage. We got a lot of crits. This is going to give us more crit and a damage multiplier. Tectonic more lucky hit chance and more crit for our earth skills we've got undaunted this is what i would like to move out i think um i'm toying with the idea of of keeping this or not um obviously it's great for uh dungeons and getting that fortified damage reduction however if you're purely going for bosses um what i'm not using right now that i'd like to slot in is fang and claw another 12 percent increased damage to enemies that are close um but right now i've got spirit tech uh territorial for more damage to close um undaunted for more damage while fortified which are always fortified more damage reduction there uh, and then lastly outmatch only level 10 uh 16 increased physical damage to non-elites and bosses mainly here for the increased damage to bosses and then my paragon board layout right now uh, i've got tectonic in our first slot then we're moving up into the earth and devastation board grabbing our damage to crowd controlled enemies uh, i've got undaunted in our first socket grabbing some more armor for us um, and then we're pushing up into the survival instincts board really important um to get this but like for example like damage reduction while fortified uh, i do want to like tweak this to just be full glass cannon full boss nuke uh, so like something like that i probably wouldn't grab um but then as we're moving away from survival instincts we're going to inner beast inner beast is really important every time we shape shift we're going to be getting reduced spirit cost the more spirit cost that we have the more we can cast our abilities the more damage that we can deal um and then from survival instincts we're moving over to the constricting tendrils board uh here i've got outmatch for more damage to uh bosses and then we've got nature magic skill damage and more max life with more nat nature magic skill damage and then from our Earth and Devastation board, I've pushed to the right uh, to grab uh, the Territorial Glyph, more damage to close, as well as all of these core skill damage increases. And then we move over, grab more core skill damage increases, 
grab our spirit on kill uh, from Ancestral and then Ancestral Guidance. After we spend 75 spirit, we deal 30% increased damage for five seconds. Uh, this is the board that I used for all of the boss kills, so I wanted to show you what it was, um, but I will have like a min-maxed version on DPS check. Guys, that is going to do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you're looking to blast some bosses, uh, this is so far the strongest thing that I've tested. Uh, I do plan on using a uh, tornado build next, and we're also going to be doing like a poison shred build. Um, so... Right now, strongest bossing thing that I've personally encountered, um, and with like our setup and the low level of our glyphs, uh, this could be one of the stronger bossing builds. Uh, it's really, really good. It can be a bit janky with the boulders, but overall, I really enjoyed it, um, and I hope you guys enjoy the build as well. I will catch y'all in the next one, guys. Take care. Peace.